Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Vice President of Creative and Technical Training for the Laredo Group, and I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial on how to set conditionals. For example, if I were to roll a die, I could get the numbers 1 through 6. However, I might want different things to happen depending on which number came up. So I might create a script that would say something like, if 1 is the number, then I want you to do this. Else, if 2 is the number, then I want you to do this completely different thing. Else, if 3 is the number, then I want you to do something even more completely different, and so on. So using an if-then-else type of structure, we can basically create a tree that makes decisions along the way. I want to show you a quick example of how we might do this by creating a program that will allow us to flip a virtual coin to determine whether it's coming up heads or tails. Now I have th this little kit here in front of me that I'm working on here. It's also easy enough to create yourself. It's just a matter of we have here a button and we have here some text tags and I also have these two dynamic text fields that we're going to be using to hold our tallies. The first thing we need to do is create some way of generating a value to determine whether or not it's going to be heads or tails. So let's start by clicking on the button here and I'm going to go into my button menu. And because this is a button, let's give it some sort of criteria to determine when it should execute its script. And I think uh, we'll go for a release. When someone lets the mouse button go, then I want you to go and run this script. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to generate some sort of a value to determine whether the value of heads or tails is coming up. And the easiest way to do this is to create a randomizer of some sort. So to begin with, I'm going to start by declaring a variable. And let me call this something like heads or tails. Okay, So heads or tails is just a container that we're putting together and what's going to go in that container is whatever the value of this randomizer we're going to create. Now the way we create a randomizer in ActionScript is we start here with putting in a math, by the way that's a capital M on math, and let's go in and say math random. Now what the math random allows us to do is really go out and give it a value and say based on this number go generate a random on it. So I'm going to go and do that and say that's going to be based on 2. All right, and do that. Now I also need to go and put an open parentheses right here. Now what this will do is it will go out and it will generate a number based upon the number two. Let's uh, take a look at what this is going to look like. I'm going to put a trace on this, heads or tails. Okay, and let's close that off. And when we run this program and click on our button, what it will do is it will generate a number, but you see there's a heck of a lot of number here. There's 1.268 on and on and on. Let's roll another one. There's another 1 point something, one, and there's some 0, 0. So there's a lot of numbers being generated, but really all we're interested in is getting the value of 0 or the value of 1 to use to determine what it should do. So we don't need this decimal point and all these trailing digits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my script here, and I'm going to truncate that information off by putting a, a math function here before we do the math random, and that is going to be math floor. Okay? So what math floor does basically is it truncates everything before the decimal point, and so it's all gone, and it will just return to us now if we run this, a very easy value to work with of being either 1, or zero. Okay, so we're going to use the ones and zeros to determine what that coin is actually doing. So now that we've generated a number, the next thing we need to do is to determine what we're supposed to do in the event that a one comes up or what to do in the event that a zero comes up. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start by saying, okay, if heads or tails, and in this case I'm going to say I want to check whether or not it's equal to the number zero. Okay, now, you may notice that we have this double equal sign, and what that really means in ActionScript is equals. I like to refer to it sometimes as really equals. But you notice we use a lot of equal signs. For example, I have an equal sign right up here, but this is not equals. Really, this is more of a kind of a balanced equation, and I like to think of this almost as a bridge. And what the equal sign by itself is saying is take the value of everything over here, cross the bridge, and toss it into this variable that I've created for it, okay, into this container. However, in this case, we're going to look to see is the value of this equal to the value of this. Okay, so if you want to look for equality, it's a double equal sign. And if a zero does come up, then what we need to do is a few different things. And one of those is I'm going to set a new variable, and I'm going to measure to see what the current number of times that heads has come up. So I'm going to say heads count is going to be equal to heads count plus 1. And what this is going to allow me to do is keep a tally of how many times heads has come up. And once that happens, I want to make sure that I'm able to show that to my user by having the field that that information is supposed to appear in update as well. So I have a field up here. I'm going to call it heads field. 
And heads field is going to be equal to heads count. Okay, so pretty much what I've done is I've, I've created a brand new container. I've said take whatever the value of heads count currently is, add one to it, put it back in this container, and then make sure that that information is put into heads field so that my user can see that there's a tally going on as well. All right, so that's how we're going to handle it if it comes up zero. However, what happens if it comes up one? Well, we're going to say if it doesn't come up zero, it's going to have to come up with something else. So if, and then I'm going to look to see heads or tails. In this case, if it's equal to one, then I want you to do something very similar. And actually, to save myself a little time, why don't I just copy this part of the script? And I'm going to paste it down here. And this time, instead of looking for heads, I'm looking to measure tails. So tails count is going to be equal to tails count plus one. And I'm also going to have a tails field. And that's, whoops, let's make sure we get that L in there. Makes a huge difference if we, uh, if we don't spell these things correctly. And tails count. All right, so basically the same thing is holding true again. If it's coming out as a zero, I want you to update the value of the field for heads count, and then I want to show you that update in the field. And the same thing, if it's uh, one, then I want you to make sure the tails is being counted up and then reflect that. And the last thing we need to do here is put a closed curly bracket. And in order for this information to show up for our user, we need to make sure that we name the fields that the data is supposed to go into. So that's very important. I'm gonna name this one heads field. By the way, these names are case sensitive, so if you use a capital here like I have with the F, you have to make sure it's also being used in your script, otherwise the data won't know where to go. So you have to be very consistent, and I have that, and let's call this one tails, and uh, spelling is really important here. If you don't spell them correctly, chances are nothing will happen. There we go. I'm learning to type all over again. All right, so now when we run our script, what will happen is the values should be thrown up into these fields. It's worth going in here and uh, running a test really fast. And if I click on this, it tells me that there's no information available for that. Well, that's unfortunate. What is causing that? Well, fortunately, I have the answer. There are a couple things we need to do. And basically, we, we need to set this program up to run. So when I start this, the problem we're running into right now is heads or tails has no value. So when I say take the value of heads and add one to it, it starts by going, I have no idea what the value of heads is. How can I add one to it? So we need to first establish a way of telling the program what the value of heads or tails is. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to put an actions script right here in our first frame. And uh, a few things that are going to happen here. First of all, let's put our good old standby stop. We don't want the playback head to go past the first frame. But what we do want to have happen every time the program starts up is we want the variables to be set so that the counter knows how many heads it's counted and how many tails it's counted. So to do that, we start by opening up a new variable, and we're just going to call this one heads count, very much matching what we've already put in there. And we're going to say this, the value of this is currently zero. And we're going to do the same thing for tails count. And the value of tails count is also currently zero. And then we need to make sure that we go and take any information that might have been in the fields and bring it back to a value we can start with. So in essence, we want to create a script that will reset these fields back to zero. And that's easy enough to do. We can go to heads field, and that's going to be equal to zero. And we'll do the same thing for tails field. Okay. And zero. And we're ready to go. So once again, it's always worth checking to make sure you've spelled everything correctly, but we should be all set. Now, if we run our program, we go up, and you'll see that zeros are in the place in both the fields. And now if we click on our button, it goes, and it's generated a value. Now, I know by looking at this that the number that was generated was zero because it took that value. It went over to the field and said, hey, what's the current value of heads? What's the heads count? And it said, hey, it's zero. It said, excellent. Take zero, add one to it, and then put that in the field so we know what that count is. Now let's go over here and click it again, and it's heads again. And now I roll tails, and there's another tails, and there's heads, and there's tails. And so based upon this little probability generator that we have, every time I click this button, it goes and it rolls this, it flips this coin for us, I should say, and it generates a value and puts that value on the screen for us to look at. Have a good time with this, and uh, I'll see you real soon.